we're expecting. Yes. How about Mark Ingram, who is a free agent mm -hmm. as well? Alvin Kamara has a strong opinion. To be clear, uh, the running back situation in New Orleans is only a mess from a committee standpoint for fantasy owners because it works out well, great that's what we're on the field. About. That's and, what we care about here is fantasy and, football. We don't like committees. Okay. Also worked out great for Alvin Kamara. Um, I'd like to see him return <laughs> Not to so much New Orleans. Last season, but anyway, uh, Kyler Murray, our mock mm -hmm. drafts on NFL.com have him going everywhere. Yeah. They have him going to the Raiders, the Jaguars, the Dolphins, some of the Patriots. Where would you like to see him to maximize his value? Miami. Why? Be fantasy impact. And that's what I want. How do you think we should approach the running back position? Yeah, you want to use in long. Okay, so like six elite running backs. Right around there. You've got some tier. other guys who can get to that elite level this season. But you need your running back. Anyone that doesn't fall into that elite category that you might not be thinking about drafting early, but we might want to think about? Yeah, I'm moving Chris Carson after round 10. Sounds crazy, right? But it's true. But there's no chance that you're going to get a Pat Mahomes past round like two this year. Uh, no, I'm definitely not going to get him in round two. I would wait until round four. Rodgers very, very early. I think that's going to be Pat Mahomes this year. Yeah, no doubt about that. But, but you're saying just be don't. It's not worth it. You have to focus on runners and wideouts early. Week one of the fantasy playoffs, and Michael Fabiano is here with your fantasy advice delivered by FedEx with a list of names that you might not feel compelled to play but should, like who, Fabs? So this is a list of players that could really help you. So pick them up. Who knows? The rookie could help you win the whole thing. All right, so find a way to play those guys. Mm -hmm. I understand you also have some guys that we should think about uh, getting out of our lineup. Yeah, there's some big names on there. It's 71 degrees here at the beach. A lovely night for Cynthia Freeland to join us here on our Total Access set with a few things to keep our eye on for Sunday's game. She wrote an article that's up right now on NFL.com that breaks down the analytics of the matchup and focuses on a few key numbers. Like what? When the Chiefs have the ball, what are we looking for? Well, we really want to see what happens with Patrick Mahomes when he has time to pass. If you look to see when he's had 2.5 or more seconds to pass, so not under pressure or scrambling, he's been... He has a lot of ways of disrupting the play. What stands out to you? Well, if you look at D Ford and his ability to sack the quarterback, so we've seen when he's not on the field and when he's on the field, and if you look 16% of the time, just about 16% of the time when he's playing in a blitz, what's going to happen strategically? Well, we, they, they don't even need to. 33.5% of the time they get pressure without even using the blitz. So that's going to be an interesting one. So 15.8 and All the these number numbers, they're also 55. Good. <laughs> that is the Chiefs offense versus the Niners defense. You want to come back tomorrow and do the other side of the ball? Absolutely. Okay, we'll look forward to that. In the meantime, Gardner Minshew. The ball, too, uh, who is equally challenging to stop. Tell me what the Titans are up against this week in Rob Gronkowski. Oh, man, they're up against a big physical tight end. You know, he can run. Titans linebacker. He was on Kelsey a lot. Um, you know, he was out there. He was just eating them alive Absolutely. in the first half before he got hurt, uh, helped turn the tide. Absolutely. So if they can't stop Kelsey, yeah, might be a long day <laughs> against Gronk. Absolutely. Titans Patriots, the primetime game on Saturday, 8 why? Rams wide out Robert with Willie yes, McGinnis. Yes. I understand that the old that was, school That's how you know Matt. the timing of it. That was the J.R. Redmond cap that he did. Yes, yes, yes. Look, look, look at him now. Right? Yeah. Come to camps with you. End up in all right, the stuff to talk about here. Uh, we're all waiting to see if Adama Kinsu is going to come to your team. How crazy would that defensive line be? Donald, Brock, yeah. or Sue? Yeah, it would be crazy. I know you were saying earlier how especially what we have as well in the secondary with them up front. It would definitely cause you guys are a lot better now than you were in January. I mean, I think uh, with these additions that we have uh, with what does that mean for you? Uh, big loss, big just as his presence on the field, you know, him on the opposite side of top will let me do the work across. Well, you know that you've got a quarterback that can get you the ball, and I'm not sure that that was something that you necessarily knew for sure when you signed. Um, he leads us in the, in, the, in the meeting room and on the field. He's just About uh, the big news this week with regard to the catch rule, uh, that they are recommending that the rule change to essentially be a catch if it looks about Dez. Are you surprised at all that he's still out there? Um, I think Dez is still a free agent by Dez. Pick a team for him. What do you think would be a good fit? Um, Washington. Oh. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, you see Irvine to get a jump on their season for which the expectations are sky high as Eric <laughs> Dickerson well knows former Rams running back and current vice president of business affairs with us here today. Does this look like a Super Bowl squad to you? Uh, on paper, yes. And I say that, but you don't play the game on paper. You actually have to go out and play the football game. And if we don't get hurt, if you get someone, if you get our left tackle Whitworth hurt, you could we could be in trouble. So because, you know, I was trying to say 
man, he, you know, he's not the same player he was in St. Louis. I said, it's no blocking. I Game this year down in Mexico in week 11 against the Chiefs. <laughs> uh, that's the first time that the Rams will be playing down in Mexico. How do you see that going? Uh, well, uh, and, uh, Rams camp starts 12 days from now on the 25th. I imagine that you'll be spending some time down there. Where would you say that you are in your evolution at the position? You know, there's a lot left on the table, you know. NFL defense. Uh, pretty well. The idea where you might go in the Trojan. Uh, so the Patriots were like a team that he didn't even hear from, had no idea. All of a sudden, they're the team that's drafting him. Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel like you can read the teams that you really have no idea? You definitely can gauge. Right? Uh, your boy, Sam Darnold, uh, the quarterback with whom you shared team MVP honors this past season. He mm -hmm. is going to be in Dallas for the draft. Should he be the first guy out of the green room? No. On the field, off the field, everything changes. The best adapt, and that goes for coaches and their approach to That's players right. and players in their approach to coaches. What did you think was the toughest part about transitioning to the NFL, Adanian? I think the defenses that you see in the National Football League, you haven't seen them in college. Seen it. The other thing is, early in my rookie year was the speed of the game. Yeah. It was just a little bit faster than I was used to. So getting through the hole. I need to get through there in a the, in the hurry. Which goes back to your original point. You've got to be able to recognize what you're seeing and you have to do it quickly. And it's interesting because you were coming out of a pro style offense as most people exactly. were back then. Now you've got people who are doing the whole check with me on the <laughs> sideline <laughs> thing and they're having to <laughs> add that to that layer of uh, addressing what the defense is doing also. What about you? For me, um, you know, coming, coming into the league, because you think you're past that? Like, you do all of that stuff. I mean, you talk about fundamentals. Fundamentals are fundamental for a reason, right? That's the thing you do when you're first learning the game. And then, you, what, you just get away from doing those specific things as you get more and more athletically inclined and things get more complicated? Or You know, I, I think now everyone's just uh, every down, third and two, check it down to the back, yeah. sitting at four or five yards for the first down. Those are the small plays that lead to the big plays. Well, as your first team, the Patriots, have shown us over and over and mm -hmm. over again over the years. Well, hopefully on Twitter and a tweet that might Michael Fabiano could not see. <laughs> Wasn't a huge fan of AB's fantasy value in Buffalo. Was promptly blocked by the wide receiver. Are you more optimistic about his value in Oakland? Yeah, slightly more optimistic. Throw the football a lot. So, big time move up for Juju. He's now a second round pick. James Washington now clearly in the mix. Let's talk running backs and the Carlos Hyde move. Kind of a non-factor toward the end of the year yeah. last year in fantasy with the Jaguars. Feels like he could get a boost from being in that Kansas City mm -hmm. offense. Uh, could also impact Damian Williams that move if yeah. you're an owner of him or you are thinking of being an owner of him. Uh, what do you think of that situation? Yeah, Carlos Hyde. NFL Media Senior Fantasy Analyst Michael Fabiano mm -hmm. tracking all the free agency moves and there are lots more to come That's at right. NFL.com slash fantasy.